Hello party people, Challenger EX coming at you here with the changes that you need to know before the new servers launch. Let's get it. First up is the KE system or the comma exchange system and this is really neat. In a nutshell, under this system, you're going to be able to disassociate your ghoul teams that you have attached to your account and it says turn them into commas by putting them into a thing called a conversion stone. Now with the conversion stone, you could you could say you could pump it with a, a certain amount of ghoul teams and that has a value to it. And then you could exchange this item like you would any other item to another player in return for commas. It's not exactly that you're buying commas from you know game or in comma, but it is a way for you to give the ghoul teams a purpose outside of just being locked into the shop and just being just being usable to buy uh, prestige items. Let's jump into the game and run a scenario here. All right, so here we are in the Dofus Touch shop and let's use my numbers here for example. Currently, my account has 6,000 gold teams. So 6,000 gold teams are pretty much stuck here in this shop ecosystem. And they can only be used to buy these kind of gold team only items. Let's take this Fleister pack for example. So now with this KE system, I could essentially take out these gold teams out of this, this shop ecosystem and turn them into commas. Now, how might that be useful to somebody? Well, let's play out, let's play out the scenario here. Say I'm little Timmy, all right? I'm little Timmy, I love the game. The only, the only downside is my mom won't let me have a credit card so I could get this super cool fleecer pack to make my character look awesome, right? Little Timmy does not have access to a, to a credit card. Even though little Timmy, He's very good at playing the game. He's got 5 million commas. He's rich in the game. But despite all his wealth, folks, he is unable to buy the Fleister pack just because it's locked behind just ghoul teams, right? So what little Timmy can do now under this new system is he could go into the, the chat or advertise that he's looking for a conversion stone that is equal value or greater to this 3,500 gold team item. So say little Timmy finds Challenger EX. Challenger EX has a conversion stone that is worth 3,500 gold teams. And now I could exchange commas for his stone. And the way the math is gonna work out is that the Ghoul teams to comma ratio is going to be based on real world currency exchange rates. Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, I, I have no idea. I have no clue. But that's the way the, the math is going to play out. So now little Timmy has a conversion stone. And without having to go through like using real money to buy ghoul teams, he used his commas to get the ghoul teams. And now he can get the fle uh, fleecer pack. Now on the other side, Challenger EX, he took those gold teams he had over here, right? He took 3,500 gold teams and he pretty much just turned them into commas because that's what little Timmy gave him in exchange for his conversion stone. So hopefully I explain that as, as simple as I can, but that's pretty much it in a nutshell. But let's move on. Paddocks and houses. If you are interested in Drago Turkey breeding, especially on the new servers, and there's two little bits of information that you might find useful. The first thing is that paddock prices, their initial prices, are gonna be based on how big they are. So the bigger paddocks are gonna be more expensive than the smaller ones. So keep that in mind. The second big thing is that the period in which paddocks are going to go on sale has been increased to a whopping 20 hours to a whole week. So if you are wondering why a paddock hasn't gone on sale, it's not a bug. It's because it could take up to a whole week for it to unlock and for you to buy. So there you go. All right, so let's talk about some juicy stuff. Some, some of the gameplay stuff that are going to be tweaking. 
much like wisdom and experience and how that was dissociated from each other and, and those characteristics were split they are going to do the same thing with chance strength and agility so with chance it is no longer going to be associated with prospecting so if you were thinking about making a chance character just because you were going to get those extra loot drops and then you can sell those drops and get some money it's not going to work exactly like you think it's going to work out in fact the prospecting mechanic is changing in a pretty big way which i'll touch upon when i get to that section so the way it works now is your character has a base prospecting uh, number which is 100 and as you grow in level you're going to naturally gain prospecting points uh, which is a maximum of 66 at level 200 and of course whatever equipment you have is going to add more uh, prospecting points onto your character strength not this one's not as as a big deal uh, strength is no longer going to be associated with pods uh, the way you're going to get more pods is by leveling up your profession and this is the the next big thing here and let me go ahead and read and let me make sure i read this right because it was a little bit confusing chant will thus increase a character's dodge while agility will increase lock okay so i did all right so th th personally i think this is a little bit backwards when you think of agility you think of agile fast quick somebody who can dodge things right uh it's a little bit backwards but now if you make a chance character you're going to be able to lock things no you're going to be able to dodge uh, more effectively than others and agility you're going to be able to lock things together um yeah so keep that in mind i have my thoughts on it but we'll keep going we'll keep going changes to drop rates and loot quantity there's a lot of information here folks uh i su highly suggest you guys go through this and read this uh there is this little snippet that you guys need to know about and it's the change to just prospecting and how it works another major and extremely important change is being made to prospecting in addition to how it's calculated the role of prospecting as a stat will drastically change to become an optimization characteristic for a very specific group of players. As of this update, prospecting will no longer affect the chance of getting resources from monsters and dungeon keepers. All right guys, prospecting is not gonna help you get more drops. The drop rate of these resources will not only be regulated by challenges in combat, as well as the bonus pack and the bonus pack elite. However, prospecting won't become useless, far from it. Because for those who love the throw of the drop, prospecting will affect the drop rate of Dofus, Dofu, Dofus, as it does now, in legendary weapons, which wasn't the case previously, in a third type of item, which we'll talk about in this next section. So pretty much prospect, prospecting is gonna be used to drop kind of like those legendary type of items right the dragon eggs the dofus and the legendary weapons of course other than that if you're looking to farm stuff you know you really have to be engaged in combat because you have to do the challenges and of course the bonus pack as it gives you like a a, a drop perk but yeah folks big changes happen to the game this is why i'm this is why i'm letting you know but we're not done yet. We're not done yet. Let's move on to the next section here. What if a Jelano was dropped? In a nutshell, guys, you're going to be able to drop equipment for monsters once again. It's going to be at a low rate. Yes, you're going to be able to drop Jelanos like you did back in the day. And there are going to be linked to your account for a certain time frame. But there's a couple of bombs in here. One being that yes you can drop level 200 items for monsters that is crazy and i love it i'm i'm here for it that's not it folks that's not it folks
other than gaining Primordial Dofus as Endophyte loot, which will be replaced by quests in the future updates. Oh no, boys. Boys. I'm, I'm, spe I'm speechless. I've been talking about this for like three years. I could finally retire. <laughs> I've been told, oh, man. Oh, 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 what, what? Let me read that again. Let me read that again. Other than getting primordial dofus at the end of... Oh, I can't even speak. Other than getting primordial dofus at the ass end of fight loot, which will be replaced by quests in the future updates. You know what? I can finally rest. I can finally reach. I, I can literally finally retire. I've been talking about making the questable Dofus for a long time, and it's happening, guys. It is happening. I, I can't believe it. I, I really can't believe it. This is huge. This is huge right here. Is Ankama listening to my, to my crazy ramblings? here on the crazy tubes I've been I said this recently not recently I've said this a couple of times where like they could have both right they could have they could cater to the people who are like farming the dofus and getting like that 0.001 percent and treat it like the legendary weapons right if they drop a dofus from the say if they drop a dofus from the from the minotaur right from the minnow right it could say drop by Timmy, right? Drop by Timmy and they can sell it. Right? They put it on the market. They can still do the regular drop thing, put it on the market and sell it if they want to. But if you do the questable uh, Crimson, right, it's actually linked to your account. So so you actually get like a quest item. So so you still have both, right? You still have the people who who want to go through the storyline and quest for the Dofus and kind of fulfill like, you know, the, the, the main story of the game which is the bringing these dofus together and you could cater to the people who just want to drop the thing and make some money or whatever have you right you could have both and um yeah i cannot wait i cannot wait because I, I i know this is supposed to be a fast kind of quick video but a, a big part of the channel which what a big part of the channel was i wanted to do lore videos and because you know i went with dofus touch there's like no no context to a lot of this stuff and yeah i know there's there's pc dofus and pc dofus has a whole you know storyline fleshed out and everything but but i i really wanted to consume it via via like the game you know i'm dedicated to so yeah, yeah, a big part of making the channel was uh, was finally making like more videos and lore on the Dofus, on dragons, stuff like that. So for me, this is the biggest drum, but the biggest bomb, and this whole and this thing's huge too. Like my voice, it's my voice is oh man. Yeah, this this was a lot of information. And it's just this little snippet right here, just this little thing. Oh, oh it's just buried in there. Like it's nobody, nobody talking about this. Uh, I don't know. We'll get to the comments, but um, oh, and it keeps going. Look at all this. It's just buried in there. Oh, I can make this its own video. Okay, let's keep going. Let's keep going. All right, folks. To wrap this up, I highly suggest you read through the blog post, and you know, there's a lot of small detail in here. Especially for existing Dofus Touch player and game players. There's a lot of little things here and there. This is a big, as you see me scrolling through here. This took me a long time to read and, and to comprehend just to, I could break it down for you guys in a somewhat quick video. But yeah, for them to just not have a beta server for it's all this stuff, it's kind of weird, but it is what it is. Hope you guys enjoy this type of video, this information. Drop a like. Comment, subscribe, you know the whole deal, guys. This has been Challenger EX. Until next time, take care of yourself and peace.